Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and humanoids of all ages. Welcome to this hallowed evening. And to celebrate, I shall be reading you three stories, all written by me, but one of them is true. That's right, one of these stories really happened. So, this is a game for you to try and figure out which one. Well, here's the first story. Where I lived back in Ireland, there was a bog, a swamp if you will, and there was a story going round of howling in the evenings and strange lights going across and disappearing suddenly. The people said it was a ghost of a man who had been swallowed up by the bog while he was cutting turf. They never found his body. I had heard the screams enough times to believe it, and it sent shivers down my spine. One day, one of our dogs, Spanner, went missing. We could hear her barking in the forest beyond, beyond the bog, and because I lost the game of tag, I was one that had to go and get her. I went across the bog and I was fine. There was no problem, but as I went in, I, it took me a long time to find her. But once I had come out, it, it had turned to night and I was very scared. I just wanted to get home and in the distance, I saw some lights which I thought was my house, so I started to run, holding the dog in my arms. And just as I got near the lights, they went out. And I was so scared, and I re then I realised I was stuck. The, the bog had taken my feet and stuck them in there. I had to dig, clawing the mud off my feet to pull myself out. And while I was doing this, the screaming started up. At a distance, getting closer and louder and louder, I dug more frantically and managed to get my feet out. I picked up the dog where I'd left her and started to run. I, I came onto the road. I hit the gravel. The screaming was behind me, everywhere. So loud and sharp, my ears hurt. I kept running. I saw the lights of the house. And I got, I got to the light and stopped. I looked behind me, and there was something disappearing, like a mist, hands stretched out, mouth agasp, looking for help to be pulled out. That night, I left all the lights on. Now it's the time for the second story. Before I was born, my parents bought a house in County Clare and had just moved in. They were happy and well, trying to deal with a family of three. But one day, a neighbour from down the road and her daughter suddenly disappeared without a trace. But the house they lived in had once been owned by a woman who loved her son too much for good measure, and a father who was not the gentle sort, especially not to his mother. As the years went by, she loved him too much and desocialized him from the environment that when she passed away, it had huge effects on his mentality. Also his father turning all his anger and grief onto his son. It did not help him. As he grew up he was he he, he caused some petty crimes and and distrust to the community and left, disappeared for years. And then he came back just before this mother and child disappeared. The police were sluggish to move. They did not react very fast until 
a priest from the neighbouring town also vanished. Then search parties were sent and last to be taken was a girl. She managed to escape as he was trying to flee the police. She was one of the lucky ones. As the police caught up to him, they pinned him down and he just laughed out shrilly. <laughs> I'll tell you where they are. They're in the forest up the road. They're all still. They're not moving. <laughs> As the police went to the forest where he told them they would be, they found three bodies. The girl, the mother, and the priest. The reasons why he did it was that house was his. They had no right living there. They had no rightful ownership of that place. The priest, he said, had done things to him which he cannot explain. Evil things is what he said. They locked him up, threw away the key, and fed him cigarettes until he passed away. While this was happening, my parents, my brothers and sisters, all lived in that house, just down the road from it. And we still have that house today. Well, now we've come to the last of our stories, the third story for tonight. And I hope you've got your thinking hats on to figure out which one's true. Where I grew up, there was an abandoned house opposite ours. All the windows were broken and it was covered in brambles, nettles and ivy growing up the chimney. We played a game when we, while we were bored because we were on holiday, for Halloween in fact. The game was to see how far you could get into the house and make a mark on the wall and get out. My brother and his friend went first. They came out boasting that they managed to get to the second floor. So I knew if I wanted to win, I would have to go to the attic. So I went into the house and it was pitch black. I had to feel around hitting walls until I felt the stairs. There was one missing and I I, cl I, s I climbed to the second floor. I saw the attic, attic hole and climbed up it. And as I was feeling, I felt something behind me slide up my back onto my shoulder. I didn't know what to do. I tried to escape. I dropped down the hole after I just marked and I ran out and my brother and his friend were laughing at me until they stopped and what they saw was a bloody sleeve on my shoulder. They both stopped laughing then. We never went into that house again. That was the last story ladies and gentlemen. As always, till next time. Have a good evening. Enjoy Halloween.